Come here, Rugi. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here, Rug. Here, right now. Come here. Here. Get some water. As a plumbing contractor, I worked with every major brand and every major company that you can think of when it comes to pumps. I've never worked with a company quite like Rural Power Systems. Very quickly they took an interest in my project and also clarified that they have a lot of experience as they are off-gridders as well. They engineered a system specific to my needs. Now, after opening the boxes and going through everything and making sure I had what I needed, I quickly recognized that the shrink wrap, the electrical tape, the accessories that were sent were not cheap. They were not low quality products, which made me feel good about things. After pre-assembling the solar panel mount kit, I got a piece of four inch pipe from the scrap yard and got things mounted. Now I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna put this mount about four feet higher than what it is right now. Similar to the yard hydrants, I don't want animals rubbing up against the actual panels, so I'm gonna raise them up a little bit. The installation went together real fast. The step-by-step -step guide that came with the kit was very clear and understandable. This system is what's called the RPS 400. Now again, their engineer specified this is what I need for my application. The only thing that he did clarify was there may be a need for two more solar panels, but we'll see how this goes. One of the things that I also liked was that this particular pump is rebuildable in the field. There may be other companies out there that make a complete kit like Rural Power Systems, but I couldn't find them. They had everything all in one place, from good high quality monocrystalline solar panels to again a pump that can be rebuilt in the field to just more than anything a very clear installation process. I took an old extension cord that was still in good shape and used that to tie the well pump into and then tie it into the controller. I had to get in and out of the well probably a dozen times to get it hung properly and to get everything installed in a way where I'm not gonna have to worry about it. I used stainless steel guy wire to hang the pump. I hung it about two feet off the bottom, ensuring that there was at least five or six feet of water above it. Now this is the lowest, driest this well should ever be. I don't want that well pump sucking sediment up, and the well's been sitting for a couple of weeks, so the water's actually quite clear.
Now again, following the instructions, I installed the control panel, wired it up as specified. There is a low water float that shuts the pump off so it never runs dry. And there's also a tank float which shuts the pump off when the tank is full. I'm guessing based on experience they've considered everything. Check the description for a link to their website. They're a great company and I would happily use them again. I'm sure it's going to take a few days for that tank to completely fill, but it didn't take long before I had water flowing. I'll let it run through the weekend, hoping that it gets that tank filled up as much as it's supposed to be full. And then I want to start checking pressures from the different yard hydrants around the place, just to get an idea of what we're working with. But I can tell that everything is going to be fine. Up here. The tank is right up there on the hill. The house right there. Okay, I'm gonna let the solar panels and the pump do their job and let this thing try and fill up over the weekend. Um, it's a 2,500 gallon tank. Uh, we've been getting some uh, little storms come in and out. I'm sure that's affecting the uh, solar panels a little bit. Um, but I went up and just checked the tank and there is water uh, trickling into it, but I'm sure it's gonna take a few days for it to recover. So I'm looking forward to coming up here Monday morning and seeing uh, how full the tank is. And then I'm gonna check the pressure all over the place and just kind of see what we're working with. When I was 18 and we were, uh, I, was, I was taking part in a wilderness survival program in the, in the mountains of, of northern Arizona. And we, uh, I was in charge of finding water one night. And uh, the, 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 this is about January, mid-January. And the normal landmarks that you would look for to find water were just not there at that time of the year because all the leaves had dropped and things like that. And where I thought was water, there was a group of about eight or ten of us, and where I thought water was, there was no water. And so I, upon reaching this point, it was at the end of a day, we'd all drank the, the two canteens of water that we had, that we packed with us. Everybody had two canteens of water. And somewhere in the middle of that, I realized that I, number one, I failed everybody that was with me. And number two, it was still my responsibility to find water. So I, everybody else sat down and they dropped their packs. I dropped my pack. I went and found a quiet place to uh, get a little bit of help from a higher power and then I stood up and I took off walking in a very particular direction at which time I found a an old forest service lo logging road forest service road something along those lines and sometime in the past three or four days it had rained and we found a rut that was left by a tire, a big wide tire, that had driven down that road sometime in the past. And there was about 12 feet of rut that was about 8 inches wide and about 4 or 5 inches deep. And there was enough water in that rut for the 10 of us to not only quench our dehydration, to fill our canteens and to be able to cook a little bit of food that night. That's the only thing at this moment that I can compare this too. Um, the tremendous challenge, all the hard work that uh, it's taken to get to this point um, is one thing, but all of a sudden having this water here where I know that we could live, I guess, ultimately. I don't know how many times I've said water is life. Um, I don't know, big deal, a lot of emotions. 
I probably should get my testosterone checked one of these days, but beautiful feeling of, of accomplishment to say the least. The next big question I have to deal with, the next big challenge I have to deal with before it cools off is how I'm going to shelter that tank up there. Am I going to build a stick framed uh, shed around it, which would be the fastest and easiest, but probably cost me four or five hundred bucks? Am I going to try and round up and scrounge up a bunch of railroad ties and build it out of railroad ties and then pile dirt up against it? That's one of my ideas. The third idea is based on the earth ship idea. If you don't know what an earth ship is, look it up. But the bottom line is it would cost me nothing but time using tires. And again, I would bury the dirt up onto it. I really want to do that. I really want to bury the dirt up around that tank. It'll insulate it really well. I love the idea of the earth ship, uh, but I, I, I could never build an earth ship up here in this county and get it approved. But building a well house out of it, there's no reason why I couldn't do that. Um, I think I want to try that. I think I want to do that. Uh, there's plenty of tires around here. And the idea of taking a tire that would end up in a landfill or end up getting burned and using it for something up here uh, intrigues me. The other side of this coin is if I get comfortable with this, this idea of using those, those uh, tires as walls, I may build a root cellar out of those tires. Um, I actually like that idea. I can get railroad ties around here, but they're not cheap. I'd probably spend more money on railroad ties than anything, but they're sturdy, they're durable. So I'm leaning towards the earth ship. The only problem is it's going to take me some time to get that thing done. I'll have to get the wife and kids up here on the weekends every chance we get to help me fill those tires with dirt. But uh, I got to get that figured out real quick. I've got, you know, maybe a, a good solid two or three weeks before it's going to get far enough below freezing that it's, it has the potential to damage uh, the, the fittings that are exposed up there. I may still insulate those in the meantime, but anyway, beautiful day.